about Bill Spaden. I'm a retired dairy farmer from uh, Orange County, western end of Orange County. We border Orange, uh, uh, Madison County and Greene County. Uh, we live uh, about 25 miles from Charlottesville, 25 miles from Culpeper, and uh, about 50 miles west of Fredericksburg and 50 miles east of Harrisonburg. Uh, we, I was uh, uh, in 1979, uh, Marline <coughs> approached my wife and myself uh, to by the landman to lease our farm in Orange County for a uranium mine and mill. I'm reading from a letter that I was going, going to present down to the Uranium Mining Committee. <coughs> Being ignorant of uranium mining, we had a number of questions. With that in mind, my wife and I decided to tour some uranium mines out west. Marline, on hearing of our plans, offered us a company airplane out of Denver to see one of their mining operations in Wyoming, an offer we declined. My wife and I went out to Colorado and Utah to check out mines and mills and learn as much as we could about the industry by talking with miners, mine operators, neighboring ranchers, and neighbors before contemplating signing a lease. On return to Virginia, we learned from the landman that he had been instructed to precede us to all the mines and mills I told him we were going to visit to be sure that we got the, quote, right, end quote, answers. Apparently, the landman was two hours behind us at every stop. We had numerous visits over the next year, not only from the landman, but also from the company general manager, Norm Reynolds, and the company hydrologists in efforts to answer our questions and alleviate our fears as to the safety and environmental compatibility of the exploration, mining, and milling of uranium in Virginia. The sign-up bonus of $12,000 is very enticing for this dairy farmer. As we dragged our feet for some time, Marline offered us a partnership in the company. We were perplexed as to why Marline was paying so much attention to us until we saw a map of Northern Virginia, Marline had on the wall of their display of a local high school science fair. This map showed results of the most radioactive spots in Northern Virginia as per the scintillometer test signified by one bar to four bar map symbols. I own the most radioactive spot in Northern Virginia, having the only four bar symbol on the map in Northern Virginia on my farm. Thus potentially and arguably we own the Coles Hill of Northern Virginia. My land was on a hill above the Rapidan River, a major tributary to the Rappahannock River and water supply to towns like Orange and Fredericksburg. And because of the extensive radioactivity and heavy metal pollution we observed in the semi-arid west, we could not in good conscience be a contributor to the degradation of the Rapidan, the Rappahannock watershed and ruination of good farmland. We did not want our farm to become a Superfund site, costing taxpayers tens of millions of dollars to clean up, as we have since seen in Uruvan, Colorado, Durango, Colorado, Monticello, Utah, among many other sites. Before anyone decides on the safety of the mining and milling the uranium in a high rainfall climate, I would strongly suggest that they Google Navajo uranium which is in a semi-arid region <clears throat> in Arizona and Utah and get an idea of what the potential long-term problems would be with our over 42 inches of rain a year. Those who diminish the significance of the former <clears throat> Northern Virginia uranium leases are rewriting history. Revisionist history is a disservice to the work of the National Research Council's Virginia Uranium Mining Committee and the people of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that was how we got involved in, in uh, uranium mining and the prospects thereof. I also served uh, 28 years in the uh, planning commission for, for Orange County as uh, w w well as being a dairy farmer and uh, I try and remain active in uh, civic affairs of the county and region. Which sites and counties were they interested in in the northern part? In the Piedmont area? In uh, Northern Virginia, well, they're, they're definitely interested in Orange County. They had leases in Madison County. 
then they went up to the next watershed up there, the Agroquan watershed, uh, which supplies water to Fauquier County and Fairfax and all that area. And the, uh, uh, all, <clears throat> just about all the politicians up there, including Loudoun County and all, were, got involved. And we were supported by, I believe, every board of supervisor, every county from Orange County North. Mm -hmm. okay. it, what type of terms did they offer to secure these leases? How much? Well, initially they, they came in here and offered a, a dollar an acre uh, to uh, secure the lease per year on, on farm. A lot of farmers saw this as uh, free income. After, after we went out to uh, Colorado and Utah, we talked to ranchers out there. We found they were paying three dollars an acre out there in, in the semi-arid area. So we came back and wondered why they were <clears throat> trying to hoodwink the uh, f farmers in this area. And <clears throat> uh, within a month or so, uh, the uh, uh, lease rental uh, went up to three dollars an acre for everybody who had leased. I had not leased myself. I couldn't put myself in the position of taking their money and and having concerns about them at the same time. What about your neighbors um, here? Just about everybody here was approached, signed up. I don't remember exactly how many acres, but just about all, uh, a very high percentage of, of the farmland at the western end of Orange County was leased by Marline Inc. for uh, uh, exploration mining and milling and people had signed uh, uh, lease agreements to to that effect. Do you know of any other landowners that refused, such as yourself? I don't recall anybody actually refusing besides ourselves. There probably were a couple, uh, but I, I don't recall them at this point. It was, it was a, a number of years ago. But uh, most people saw this as an uh, easy way to get in some income, so they uh, signed, signed the lease, essentially, uh, very often without reading the lease. They really didn't understand some of, the, some of the nuances in it, which would be very detrimental to the farmer if, if they actually found and mined uranium on their property. What about some of the terms that you remember that were in the leases? One of the things that I questioned some neighbors on, uh, did they realize that if they mined on uh, Farmer A and the mill was on Farmer B, that out of the royalties of Farmer A would come the transportation costs of the ore to Farmer B uh, on, on whose farm the mill was on. And, and in that case, most of, if they're any distance away, the hauling charges for the ore could wipe out most of the royalties that would logically come to that farm. And this actually happened in some cases that we found down in Texas where essentially a farm was ruined and they had to transport the ore 50 or more miles to a mill and when the farmers wound up with a check and a <clears throat> ruined farm ten years later, they had $2,500 in royalties to show for it. Uh, and a lot of people did not really understand what they had signed. Mm -hmm. these, these leases are written by the industry lawyers, not, by, not to protect the farmers from whom they were leasing the land. Do you think that um, Marline considered the deposits here valuable and why? You want to tell us about your deposit, your particular? Well, we, we were really perplexed as to why, why they were paying so much attention to us and f sending the land man out, offering us a company plane, uh, offering me a $12,000 sign-up bonus after we dragged our feet for a while. They offered us a, a partnership in, in the company. And we really didn't understand uh, the the uh, the pressure. Uh, the cause of the pressure was that I owned the hottest spot in Northern Virginia, and they they were really uh, anxious to uh, explore and 
potentially mine uh, this property on me, which is right adjacent to the Rapidan River. All right, Mr. Speed, I'd like to ask you a question. We know that uranium does mix with water and valves. This will destroy the bay more and also our drinking water. Well, according to what we learned when talking with, with ranchers and citizens out west in Monticello, Utah, uh, various places, uh, um, Durango, Colorado, where they had a mine right on the Animus River, and the tailings piles were there. There was a Superfund site, and we spent uh, tens of millions of dollars hauling that site off. Uh, Eurovan, other sites out west. Uh, we, uh, if if that can happen in a case where they have 12 to 15 inches of rain a year, it doesn't take a whole lot of imagination to worry about what can happen where you have over 40 inches of rain a year, such as we do. And we have a really good example of this right here uh, between uh, Orange and and. Uh, Louisa, Spotsylvania County, on Contrary Creek, which runs into uh, Lake Anna. If you go over the bridge and stop on the bridge and look down into Contrary Creek, it is a dead creek. There is nothing, no vegetation, there are no animals and no fish in it. What happened there? This was, there are still tailings piles there from gold mining operations that happened to in the 20s, 30s, 40s, the last one closed up in 1952, but the tailings ponds are still there. And this isn't radioactivity problems, this is acid problems coming from these mines into these tailings piles on not just above Contrary Creek. And to this day, this is a dead creek. Every time it rains, these tailings ponds overflow and the water was tested in these tailing ponds to be down around 3.2 pH, which essentially is like battery acid. Mm -hmm. And it is acid that comes down, and it can be seen today, the coloration, the yellow uh, from, from the sulfur uh, is there, <clears throat> and it is, uh, this is, could be a harbinger of what could happen if we had uranium mining with the tailings piles, which is a technology still being used in uranium mining uh, that, that can happen in the tailings piles and ponds. Because we we have a, out west they have a positive evaporation rate, uh, meaning that they have more evaporation than they do rainfall. Therefore these ponds do very seldom actually overflow. They do seep into the ground underneath. Here, they would actually overflow because we have a negative evaporation rate. We have a higher level of rainfall than we do evaporation. Therefore, the water is going to accumulate and overflow from these ponds. And we can see it on Contrary Creek right here in Spotsylvania County.